up, everybody? Welcome to episode 33 of season 2 of the Monday Night Wars. I am Chad Talks, and joining me as always is the man who wrestled his first match in Austin, Texas, and 19 years later wrestled his last match in Austin, Texas, J Mac Gaming. That was me? That was you. Mm, I'm great. I'm the. <laughs> I'm so cool. Stone Cold J Mac Gaming. What? What? All right, Chad. Welcome to Monday Night Random. As uh, oh, Monday Night Random. If you could remember last last month on the Go Home, Chad ran a auto book thunder and and ran with it. And tonight, we're doing the same here in Raw. I don't know if he's gonna do that any other show this week, but I'm, I feel like I gotta you know match it. You know that was a that was a fun thunder. So. Let's see if I can work through this. <laughs> work right. through this raw. Let's get into it. Ooh, a pre-show bout here, Chad. Dan Severin teamed up with the Rock and Roll Express to take on Duke the Dumpster Drossy and the Headbangers in a substance match. A substance match. There is no substances allowed in dumb. Fire them. Fire them all. Three on three substance comedy match. What the hell is this? <laughs> I just like do drugs on stage. I hope not. Mosh pinned Robert Gibson <coughs> to get the win. So the headbangers get a nice win over Dan Severn and the Rock and Roll Express. What kind of match is this? Our, our other. Oh my God. Why is heavy metal in this? Oh. Talk about six man tags. Six man tag pre show. Heavy metal and the stash and stud win. They take on Jim Duggan and the Quebecers in a substance match. What the hell's going on here? A lot of substance being used on the um, pre-show here, but Heavy Metal taps out Jim Duggan. Um, <laughs> glad Heavy Metal used his one appearance here on a pre-show on a random show. <laughs> You're just like, hey, thanks for, thanks for having me. Uh, oh, this is how we're going to start Raw off? <laughs> All right. Jimmy Jacobs defeats Epico in 441 with a Contra code. Good for the random to give me oh. Jimmy Jacobs winning a match. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, this was a poor way to start the show. Yeah, I know. We had Tim White a couple weeks ago. Talk to me about poor. Um, yeah, it's a decent little match right there. Jimmy Jacobs, king of the mountain. Jimmy Jacobs. Oh, speaking of King of the Mountain, and another match on the show. We go match to match. Jeff Jarrett defeats Chemo in 907 with a figure four leg lock. Jeff Jarrett continuing the hot streak that he is on. Uh, he will be in action at at Judgment Day, Chad. How great am I? He's going to get a rematch of the Intercontinental Championship against Mark Henry and Taka Michinoku. It will be a triple threat match. Ooh, hell yeah. Something I needed the book on this raw, but it did not happen because of the random. Uh, Buff Bagwell calls out. He says, "I I've been uh, I've been I got a mystery partner tonight." He says he's got a mystery partner, and he's, he wants to challenge the best tag team in the division, which is a steel and CM Punk. And he says he wants that match now. And he call, he, he says, "I want I want this to be a world tag team title match." And uh. And Punk's like, brother, you don't even have a partner. I can't give you a title match yet. And he says, all right, fair. But we're going to beat your ass. And when we do, we're going to get a title match. So that match is up next. I wonder who Buff Bagwell's partner is. It's Billy Ryle. Billy Ryle. Uh, the Second City Saints, Saints win in 629 in a tuxedo match. Interesting. Why are there gimmick matches all over the place? I love how... It was an elimination match, and the first person eliminated was Billy Ryle, and then Buff Bagwell. So like, Buff, like, so like Buff Bagwell still could have came back and won the match without a partner. It's very true. And a tuxedo match. Damn. And a tuxedo match. Sixty-seven isn't terrible, I don't think. Oh. Randy Orton comes out and he trash talks King IK. He says, King IK, why do they even call you a king? You haven't done anything in this company. You fluked your way. You snaked your way to a title. But look at that. The first time an actual competitor, actual competition came around to fight you for it, you lost. See, no one's going to beat me. I'm going to be the longest reigning European champion. And after that, I'm going to... 
I'm, hell, I'm not even going to lose the battle. I'm going to go straight after the Intercontinental Champion, uh, the Tag Team Champion. Hell, I'll go to SmackDown and win the United. I'm going to be the king of the mid-card belts until I'm ready to fight for the World Heavyweight Championship. I am the, 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 the Viper Randy Orton. And Mike Tyson says, oh, damn it, brother, I'm hurt. Uh, <laughs> this, he says, uh, last week I was in a match and I broke my butthole. And unfortunately, I'm out for a couple a couple weeks and I can't wrestle again. But I can be there for my, my boys, Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar, future shock. And that's what I'm going to be doing because Brock Lesnar is going to have a match. He's going to have a match at Judgment Day. It's going to be an open challenge. Oh my fucking god! I love, I love injuries, Chad. I love injuries in this fucking game. Uh, oh, I'm so happy! Firehouse settled their differences for one yeah, night. What the hell's this? Vince McMahon, <laughs> Mark Henry, and Christian Cage defeat the Firehouse and King Aikea when Vince pinned Joey Matthews in 9/11 in a substance <laughs> match. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm never doing Raw Monday Night Random again. Big Keish losing. Well, oh. well, well, you might Christian be out of the main a, event. Christian has a damaged neck. Monday night random. And then Brock was like, hey, since the other two members of Future Shock spoke. <laughs> he said, hell yeah, Mike Tyson was right. At Judgment Day, I'm going to beat someone's ass. I don't care who it is. I don't care who steps up. You've seen all the destruction I've laid waste to here in Monday Night Raw, and that continues at Judgment Day because I am the one of one. I'm the genetic freak, Barack Lesnar. We move on. Jushin Liger. Chad, actually, Jushin Liger. Remember last week he shook his head watching Brock Lesnar and Mike Tyson. He calls out right before this match. He calls out Lesnar. He wants Lesnar. He says he's going to defeat the streak. So it's going to be Liger and Lesnar at bad or Judgment Day, Chad. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that leads into Yokozuna coming out. He is the pre-show champion, and he's tired of call-outs. He wants, a, he wants a main event match tonight, but he wants to be with Jushin Liger as a partner. And he says, get two random guys out here, two random guys who the fans love but just haven't won anything in this save, and that's Stone Cold and Taka. And they have a match, Chad, and uh, Stone Cold and Taka have excellent chemistry. All right. Sick. Sick. All right. That's. Um, let me write that down. Uh, two on two tuxedo match, of course, because Liger loses right before his big match against. Man, they love tuxedo matches. <laughs> what a match this was. Austin and Taka win, defeating Liger and Yokozuna. Austin 99, Liger 93, Taka 80, Yokozuna 43. <laughs> <laughs> the Olympian Kurt Angle says his odds have drastically gone up <laughs> since C Christian Cage is probably hurt. Let's let's be honest. Listen, C Christian Cage, he's complaining about a damaged neck. I want a, a gold, gold medal, medal with, with a broken, broken freaking, freaking neck. neck. <laughs> says, and now I guess this is a triple threat match. I would assume so. Me winning and me going on to face the Rock for the belt. My odds have drastic gone up. You see, the numbers don't lie. And they spell sacrifice for you, <laughs> Christian Cage. And you sacrificed your neck. Uh, Jim Cornette and Rock says, you see that? You see Christian Cage get hurt? <laughs> God damn it, motherfucker, why are we doing Monday Night Raw random? Dude, all, my, all my superstars are getting hurt. And the Rock's like, that's why I don't wrestle on Monday nights. And Cornette's like, well, you don't think you're going to wrestle here on Monday nights? How about we are in the main event tonight? In the main event tonight, motherfucker. You're going to go one-on-one -on -one with the man you beat at the last pay-per-view game in a non-title match. You don't, you don't want to wrestle on Monday nights. Hell, you lazy piece of shit. And Kane comes out, and he's like, Yeah, you lazy piece of shit. And that match happens, and The Rock pins Kane in 1449, and that is the end of Monday Night Random on 94. <laughs> Wasn't that fun, Justin? I hate those. I like them, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> if they weren't all gimmick matches and Vince McMahon wasn't in a match, that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be cool. All right, we'll see you for Monday Night Nitro. That's gonna, it's going to be a big night show, a huge, a monumental night show. We'll see you it's then. It's going to be
All right, everyone. This is going to be a weird one. Um, I have also uh, Monday Night Randomized Nitro for the Go Home Show, uh, within the exception of one thing. Um, and you will see what happens when we run it. Um, Justin, I gotta say, uh, I have no fucking idea what's about to happen. This is, this is, might be the downfall of WCW. It, it could be, depending on what happens. No, let's get into it, though. Um, okay, and I, uh, and a, is this a pre-show match? And a pre-show, pre-show match? And a pre-show angle. Uh, Ahmed performs his new one-man show, um, actually Ahmed, um, for everyone. And it, we know it went really well. I didn't know Ahmed was a one-man band. Doing a one-man show. Um, and then that was the whole pre-show. And now we've got <laughs> the show. Mike Tanay and Bobby Heenan are in the ring. And Mike Tanay says, In the build-up between Thunder and Nitro, unfortunately, Chris Jericho injured himself. And I was in the match on Thunder. Yes, yes. On a match on Thunder in the main event, Chris Jericho injured himself. And he will be out of action for 22 days. Which means... You will not def- be able to defend the world championship. And now, normally, you would think, well, they'll just postpone the match. But no, Dean Malenko has threatened lawyers. He has threatened to sue WCW if he does not get his championship match. He's demanded it, and so we are legally obliged. Sylvester Stallone booked a battle royal tonight against all the competitors who do not have a match at Halloween Havoc, which means... Uh, uh, Brian, the winner of this battle royal becomes the new WCW World Champion. And Bobby says, yeah, but for how long? Because they got to face Dean Malenko uh, at Halloween Havoc. This, this is crazy. I have no idea what's going to happen. So All let's right. go see. Who, let's see who our next world champion is. Oh, and about... That had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Goldberg won a battle royal. And the other members of the Final Four were Chris Canyon, Jeff Hardy, and Tommy Dreamer. And Chris Canyon being the final elimination. Tommy Dreamer got the most eliminations over the course of the match. And Goldberg wins the WCW World Heavyweight Championship, Justin. Goldberg is I think a th- I think a three time champion possibly a three time champion how unfortunate because though, because, because he won the it. yeah yeah I wish I was kind of I it would have been sick if Chris Canyon won it that'd have been cool mm. and Dean Malenko gets in the ring and he says that's right that's right I'll call I'll call my lawyer and tell them never mind but make no mistake Dean Malenko is going to win. At Halloween Havoc, so Goldberg, I hope you get, I hope you don't get too attached to that World Heavyweight Championship because you're what we call in the biz as a transitional champion. You see, Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho purposely injured himself because he was scared to fight the Ice Man. Goldberg, I, here it's gonna take more than a spear and a poorly placed jackknife to beat me. I'm gonna tap your ass out. I'll see you at Halloween Havoc, bitch. Wow, the gold, the, Goldberg, and now, Dean Malenko. Yeah, and now the rest of the show, completely random. I have no idea what's Well, happening. that battle royale was also random. The people in True, it yes. were, but the winner. Well. Yes. I think it's absolute bullshit that Kevin Nash thinks he's entitled to the match against me. However, I'm going to make it short and sweet. I want to say big congratulations to my friend Goldberg. Listen, he was the only member of Syndicate to now win a championship, and now he's the world champion once again. And maybe he'll go back on another streak. Maybe I'll beat the streak again. Who knows? Good for Goldberg. Good shit. How does, how does Scott Steiner feel about Goldberg winning the belt? Told you. Oh, was I not listening? <laughs> Owen Hart, he uh, stands in the ring and he says, you know, in Canada, they took out Jim Neidhart. They took out Brett. Everyone's asking, what does this mean for me? Well, I'll tell you what it means. It means that I am facing Team Canada 
but I won't be alone because you see, I've got myself a bulldog in my corner. That's right. A Halloween Havoc, Owen Hart, and the British Bulldog, Baby Boy Smith, takes on Team Canada, and we're going to give them a beatdown in which they have no idea what's coming because they're all guts, no heart. All guts, no heart. I like that. And uh, with that being said, he fights Rey Mysterio tonight. And then about to had a uh, 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 fan fucking tastic wrestling in the Great Heat. Uh, Rey Mysterio defeats Owen Hart with his Springboard and her crown. Yeah. You have to assume. You have to assume Team Canada had gotten Owen Hart's head, and that's what did it, Justin. You have to assume this would have got a hundred if it was a longer match. You would think they yeah. have pretty good chemistry. Um, and a freestyle segment, Scott Hall. You know, he's got his U.S. championship. He comes up to a match against Stardust. And Sylvester Stallone, he comes out and he says, Listen, Scott, all right, listen, here's the thing, all right? I know you're excited about your big match against Stardust. But listen, people are talking about that. People are talking about the travesty that was uh, Brett the Hitman Hart eliminating me in the Battle Royal that we had not two weeks ago. Right? We wouldn't be worrying about this match uh, uh, about, about Goldberg winning the belt because I because I would have wrestled Chris Jericho and I wouldn't have injured him like that unsafe Dean Malenko. Oh, but now I'm just uh, what am I doing, huh? What am I doing? What's my purpose? Scott says, "Uh, the GM." Go. Oh. Mister Nunn says, "Yeah, that's right. To be the GM. To be the GM. Right. That's 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 what I'm supposed to do." Yeah, I think so. You know what? You know what, Scott? You know what? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You know, I'm going to... There's someone responsible for this, and, and they're going to pay. All right? They're going to pay. I, I, I just... I just and he punches the hole in the wall and walks away, and Scott Hall says, What the fuck was that about? What was that about, Jen? What was that about? I don't know. It, but I'll tell you what. It, it upset Scott Hall <laughs> so much. He challenges Sylvester Stallone to a match. Um, well, but unfortunately, Sylvester Stallone knocks him out with a rocky right hand. Oh, no. Oh, no. We are backstage, and Chef and Hoovy, you know, they don't want to wait until the Rage of the Cage. They're fighting now. So they have a giant brawl, and they brawl all over the, the locker room backstage, and they bump in to Ken Shamrock. And Ken Shamrock, who is playing a rousing game of chess, with Mick Foley. And he turns around and he's like, Hey, you messed up my chess game! And he freaks out and he smacks the chessboard down the ground. And he starts brawling too. And so there's this, just a massive brawl. With Mick Foley, he's confused. And he just says, Have a nice day. He leaves. Where does he go? He, well, I'll tell you where he goes in this next segment. He goes right to the ring with Ken Shamrock. They're pretty pissed off about... <laughs> How they ruined their chess match and Chef and Hoovy up. They, listen, they're putting their differences aside for this match, apparently. Or maybe not. Maybe they fight each other while teaming. Who knows? But I'll tell you what. And about that superb wrestling and great heat, Ken Shamrock and Mick Foley defeat Hoovitude and Chef Psychosis. Ken Shamrock tapped out the champion oh, with no. an ankle lock. Don't you me? Don't maybe you we don't random? do these anymore. <laughs> maybe, we don't, maybe, maybe we don't do these anymore. Van Damme and Sting, you know, they're like, finally, some normalcy. Listen, it's an RVD. You know, you're you're fighting, you're fighting me, my tag team partner, the pay-per-view. I'm fighting you and your tag team partner at the pay-per-view. Listen, me and you, we fought at Starcade last year, and you beat me for the U.S. championship. I owe you an ass-kicking. But Halloween Havoc, I'm going to get my win back. i make you tap out Scorpion Deathlock. Rob Van Damme spits in his face. And gives them a kiss. Yes. And then they have a match. And then they have a match, and Rob Van Dam says, what, 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 what was it about getting your win back? I'm one of a kind, and hits him with a frog splash. An exceptional match. And that's the end of the show. 91. Oh. Looks like Raw wins. Yes. I would talk more about this, but I have to piss. D. Malenko versus Goldberg, Justin. Get hype. I'm not. We'll see you for SmackDown. And we are here on SmackDown. Is it 
random SmackDown though. No, no, I think we no. both. I think we both learned our lessons. All right, it's fun, but having your world champion lose. No, not having it. Having tag teams that are supposed to be feuding team together. No, no. Having Vince McMahon hurt Christian Cage. No, not having it. No. No, no. Having Chad in this call with me? No, no. Oh, well, all right. Goodbye. All right. Let's start the show. Chad, get back in here. Chad, get... He left. Chad, get in here. <laughs> what, are what are you doing, Chad? Get back in here. I got ya. No, you didn't. You thought I was gone. That's it. That's it. We're having an application for new co-host. Um... <laughs> You say that every day. No, you're right. And yeah, here I stand. Still the co-host! No, you don't... No, give it time. Give it time. They're on their way. You, you they're on their way. They're on, they're on Undertaker's bike right now. They're on their way. Good. <laughs> uh, tonight, Edge. He wants a match at the pay-per-view a couple weeks ago. He defeated Stevie Ray, and now he wants Booker T. He wants to beat both Harlem Heat, and he wants it at the pay-per-view. Booker T comes out, sucker, tell me you did not just say that. I'm the... He's not the five-time world champion, is he? He's a zero-time world champion. Oh, no. He's a zero-time... He hasn't won a belt in a while. Oh, no. Is Booker T a loser? I'd be. Chad, is he a loser? Because uh, it takes one to know one, so I'm asking you. Oh, well, that's just hurtful. <laughs> Randy Savage defeats, uh, defeats a gamer in the opening of the show. He had some of the Macho Man Randy Savage elbow drop from the top rope. Bing, bang, boom. 827 gets the one, two, three on four. Oh, yeah. On former light heavyweight champion, a gamer. Uh, as he's celebrating, there's two men standing on the ramp, Chad. Ooh. It's Ric Flair and Rhino. Rhino comes out and spears Randy Savage. Oh no! These two have been a kind of a kind of a in and out feud. I mean, Savage did defeat Ric Flair at the last pay per view. Rhino is Ric Flair's protege. Where's Jamie Noble? That's a good question. Where is Jimmy Noble? I don't know. I'm asking you, Chad. Uh, he's going to go get uh, Starbucks for him and Randy. Stardust. Okay. Uh, Kid Star. Kid. No, Starbucks. Stardust. Yes. What's Stardust to in here on SmackDown? The American Nightmare. Uh, Kid Cash is here to watch this next match, Chad. Because, again, Kid Cash is running the gauntlet. He will defend his belt against Godfather and Farouk at the pay-per-view. Because that's Kid Cash's thing. Triple threat match. Uh, tonight, he's not here monument watching, though. He's not here. I mean, he's actually, we're in Philadelphia. He's actually at the, 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 the Rocky Steps. He did the Rocky Steps montage. I don't know the Rocky music anymore. Do the Rocky music. Da, 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 da. I mean, I had Kurt Angle's music in my head. Uh, this match, yeah. Godfather and Farouk drew in 741 when Kid Cash dead levels both of them to end the match. Double disqualification. Ends the ends this little segment with him raising the belt over their lifeless corpses. Uh, poor, I mean, Chris Cash, gonna defend the belt again. Oh, yeah. Backstage, Triple H goes into uh, Shawn Michaels and Brian Danielson's locker room. He's got Road Dog by his side, and he says, Triple H or Shawn, I know there's bad blood here. I know there's history. I know you don't want anything to do with me, but I need to find some partners to take out Paul White and the Rats. I need some partners. So how about you join me and Road Dog, and we get, we get the band back together. And Brian Danielson steps up, and he says, hey, why Road Dog? Why not me? I'm with Sean now. If you want Sean, you're going to need me. So, Road Dog, how about you step the hell off? Oh, you didn't know? You're out of the, you're out of the picture now. Road Dog's like, oh, I don't know who you are, Mr. Danielson, but I'm the Road Dog, D-O-double-G, former tag team champion of the world. You, you had your belt for a cup of coffee. You think you're going to kick me out of this group? How about 
But we go settle in the ring, and whoever wins that match can join these two to fight the rats. And Brian Anderson's like, you're on. So we get Road Dog, Brian Danielson. Whoever wins gets to join the boys to take on Paul White and the Rats. Ooh. And Brian Danielson wins, Chad. Hell yeah, good for Brian Danielson. Pins Road Dog in 1155 with that big old cattle mutilation. Was, was Road Dog okay to take this loss? No. No, he was not happy. No. no. Very not happy. But against 78, so Road Dog, you should be happy. You're getting banger matches with Brian Danielson. Speaking of banger matches, El Hijo del Santo takes on Ultimo Dragon in 918 and gets a big win with the La de la Caballo. Chad, do you miss saying that every week? La de la la Caballo. Yeah, you're way off now. You're just adding <laughs> words, syllables, sounds. Doesn't matter. To del Santo, 89, Dragon, 71. Decent little match right there. Paul White says, hey, what the hell? What do you mean? It was a match between me and the rats. My rats against DX or whatever they want to fucking call themselves. I was like, Paul, oh, you, you weren't paying attention. Oh, you were too busy shining that big gold belt of yours. Yeah, you see, it's a pay-per-view. You want to do all this interference in the main events. You want to ruin our main events here. I booked a match. It'll be you, Chad and Fig, taking on Hunter, Shawn Michaels, and Brian Danielson. And Paul White's furious. He's like, you can't do this. I'm the world champion. You can't do this. Oh, I did. In, I did. In, indeed, I can. And I can also do this. How about tonight? You take on the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, in a one-on-one -on -one match. Oh, and if you have... No, I'm not going to book that. Never mind. I was almost going to book a, a gimmick there, but I realized it would not make sense. But yeah. So how about you go backstage? You go get ready. You go put that belt down. You And you go... Get in your ring gear and you got to, and go wrestle tonight, Paul. Paul's furious. He punches the door out of the ring. He doesn't open the door to get out of the office. He punches it open. This guy's oh, upset. Yeah. Shawn Michaels. Paul a, White. That, that is an as an angry, angry baby. Speaking of babies, Chase Tatum is here, and he loses to Latin Lover at eighteen or eight nineteen with the La Patata del Cabrito. What? <laughs> What's so funny, Chad? It's the La Patata. Del Cabrito. Uh, hell yeah. Good for them. Uh, Chase Tatum off his game. He stinks. Get him out of here. The Undertaker. Oh, his motorcycle. His motorcycle. He will be at the pay-per-view, Chad. He's not here tonight. He's making his way to the pay-per-view. And our main event match. This match stunk. Oh, penalized for the type of finish. Oh, okay. That's... The match drew and uh, uh, descended into chaos. All members of that main event match, the six way, came in the ring and just started beating the shit out of each other. And that's how we end it, Chad, with the two teams facing off in the middle of the ring. 88. Yeah. Yeah. That's a go home SmackDown for you right there, Chad. That's a go oh. home. That's a go home. That's a go home SmackDown. Well, you know what? I'm about to show you a go home Thunder. All right. But guess what? I'm not a. Let's see, I'm going to have a random thunder once again. Oh, let's go. We'll see you for thunder. All right, here we are. We are back with a go home to thunder and another uh, another random episode of thunder. Justin, we did one step farther. Not only did we randomly book this, but I did it. But I told you just leave it, which means we could get championship matches. To yeah, well, you could have um, like six different champions tonight, Chad. Good. How do you feel about that? I say bring it on, baby. Let's go. All right. Let's get right into the action here. Debbie Malenko and yes. Charmel to open the show. Yes. Yes. You see, Debbie Malenko, she defends the WCW Women's Championship. She is defending it at the pay-per-view. And she defended it who? now. Well, she, listen, she didn't want to wait to the pay-per-view. She wanted to get that match in now. So she defended it against Charmel Justin. Yeah, yeah, she did. And we've got a tag team match. Scott Norton and Monty Brown taking on Rick Martell and Drago. And in a pre-show uh, match, <laughs> Rick Martell and Drago <laughs> defeated Scott Norton and Monty Brown when Rick Martell submitted Monty Brown with a Boston Crab. Good for Rick Martell coming back out. <laughs> Bless you. I'm allergic to bangers, Justin. What can I say? Next match. Next segment, I should say. Oh, my God. 
Oh, man. Sting starts the show off by beating Mustafa Saeed. And Sting and Mustafa Saeed had good chemistry, and it lifted the match. That's why I got a 67. Good match right there, Chad. Yeah, Sting getting a last-minute warm-up in before the pay-per-view. Wow! <laughs> Sick Boy and Low D! They team up tonight! And in a decent match, Sylvester Stallone and Sick Boy and Low D defeat Kurt Hennig and two count. But Sylvester Stallone... Kurt, wow! A lot this tonight, truly, Justin, tonight... Well, you see, here's the thing. You know, it's, uh, it's getting close. Hey, listen, it's Halloween Havoc, but Thanksgiving is right on the corner. And Thanksgiving is about bringing people together. And we wanted to give a little glimpse of that by having these two teams reunite tonight. It may not be forever, but then again, maybe it will. You'll have to tune in to see. All right, we move on. Oh, no. Yes. Lash LaRue says, you know what, Ray? I'm a big fan of yours. I would. Can I get an autograph? And, and Ray says, oh, of course you can. Oh, it's, it's, it's so great to give a fan... Uh, an autograph and he's like yeah you know i just i like i said i'm i'm so excited i've been a big fan you know you're one of the guys that you know i i want to be like when I, when I make it in the industry he's like wow that is so good to hear chase and he's signing he's like wait chase he's like yeah you're chase tatum right <laughs> and lash the he gets so mad he just punches ray mysterio right in the mouth which leads us to our next segment Larry Mysterio versus Lash LaRue. I know how this works. In an extremely short match, Rey Mysterio defeats Lash LaRue with a springboard hurricanrana. And then after that, Stardust, he's, he's backstage, and he is playing a drum set. Here we go. A, a face-melting drum solo for no reason. Wait, he's a drummer now? He's just getting ready for his championship match against Scott Hall. Oh, no. And Adam Sand and Adam Sandler's here. He says, "You know, uh, uh, Stardust, if you're gonna play the drums, I happen to have a guitar here. How about <laughs> how about we perform tonight?" And so Stardust and Adam Sandler perform a live rendition of the Hanukkah song. Because listen, Halloween havoc. It's Halloween time, but the holidays are right around the corner. Hanukkah and havoc. here at <laughs> and here at WCW, we want to we want to remind people about the holidays. So yeah, uh, to celebrate. Hanukkah Havoc, we did the Hanukkah song live tonight with Adam Sandler and Stardust. And Chef Psychos, he's not to be undone. He says, you know what, I'm the world champion. And I think I can't think of any way to spend my thunder than singing with Adam Sandler and Stardust. A little way to take my nerves off before I face off against Uvi tonight. And so he starts jamming with them. What does he play, Justin? I think he plays the saxophone. Oh, I would say he plays the ukulele. Okay, he plays the ukulele. Why? No, he plays the saxophone. It's your guy. He, you know, you know, he plays them both at the same time. He's your face of the f- company. He plays them both at the same time. <laughs> and Ahmed, what the he says, you know what? <laughs> he says, you know what? I see, I see this epic performance, and I won't be outdone. So he starts river dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and Butterbee and Steven Regal, they see they see Stardust drumming, Adam Sandler playing guitar and singing. They see Ray Mysterio or Ray Mysterio, Chef Psychosis with a ukulele saxophone hybrid, and they see Ahmed River dancing, and they go, Well, oh, now this is what I've now this is what it's like to see culture. You know what I I'm I, you know as Steven Regal starts conducting. He starts conducting and Butterbean, he, you know, he, he, he starts, he starts screaming. He's in the, the screamo part of the song. Put on your yabaka! And Regal didn't like that. And Regal hates it because how dare you ruin such a cultural thing? And so he challenges Butterbean, and you know what? He puts the television championship on the line and beats him with an exploder suplex and makes defense number four of the WCW World Television Championship. Yeah, good for uh, good defending defending you, the the arts. You could have had um, you could have had Butterbean as champion. Yeah, thank God I didn't. Holy fuck! We have a triple threat match. Scott Hall, you know he listen. He he uh he's embarrassed that Rocky hit him and knocked him out on Nitro. So he wants to you know. So he's like you know I'm taking on two tough sons of bitches. 
Then I'm going to put my championship on the line. Let me show you what's what. And so he defends that belt and uh, defeats Big Daddy V and Meng in a tuxedo match because tough guys can also wear tuxedos. Raven shows up and you know he uh, he says, you know, I I I see, I heard that that wonderful concert from earlier tonight. I think now's the time to show off my new mixtape. And he plays uh, his own mixtape showing all of Raven's music that he's been working on for so long. And he says, yes, I would tell you all it's headbanger music, but I've shaved everyone's hair who's listened to it. So there actually is no headbanging today. I love how this is just a music show. Yes. And Owen Hart, he gets in the ring and he, you know, he... He's feeling extra musical, too. So he stands in the ring, hand over his heart, and sings the Canadian National Anthem as loud as he can. Justin, how does that song go? What, the Canadian National Anthem? Yes, please sing it for yeah, me. It's, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not bringing out my finishing move on a thunder, brother. And whatever you do, don't stop as Goldberg makes his promo. He says, you know... Last week, I or not Nitro, I won the World Heavyweight Championship. I'm a three-time champion. And I'm going to make this short and sweet. It's been a long time coming since I've been a champion. And I'm going to defend this belt against Dimalenko. And I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to walk into Starcade. That's right, Starcade. Listen... Chris Jericho, you're sitting at home. I want to say thank you so much for getting injured. And I look forward to spearing you out of your shoes when you come back. And I once again retain the championship and become the most dominant force in WCW. And Ken Shamrock and AJ Styles. Ken Shamrock once again playing chess because he is a logical monster. And AJ Styles, he says, I bet I could beat you in chess. And so AJ Styles plays him. And he, and he does. He beats Ken Shamrock in chess. And Ken Shamrock says, listen, I'm undefeated. And then takes the chessboard and bashes it over AJ Styles' head. And they have a match. And have a match? Ooh. Yes, I called it again. And an extremely short match. Ken Shamrock defeated AJ Styles. Oh, no, I don't like this. Oh, and Ken Shamrock makes defense number one of the 24-7 title. Ooh. Oh, my God. And that was the, the end main of the event. randoms. Well, that was fun. I don't think we need to do it ever again. Yep. All right. We'll see you for the pay-per-views. That's the end of the randoms because that one stunk. At least if I do yeah. the randoms, I can change. Chad telling me, hey, I don't want anything touched. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. At least.